to talk about is, is collisions. And there are two kinds of collisions. And, and, and in both cases, momentum is always conserved. Okay? Um, the first kind of collision, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, there's an example in the book, but I'm not going to test you on it numerically. But the first kind of collision is called an elastic collision. And with an elastic collision, that means there's no energy lost during the collision. In that case, in that case, the kinetic energy of the system is completely conserved. And momentum is conserved too. So the momentum before the collision is the same as the momentum after the collision. Now, there's another kind where damage is done to the system, uh, you know, like a bumper is busted or something, and that's called an inelastic collision. Now, with an inelastic collision, some of the energy is lost, right? Uh, a car runs into another car, and the bumper gets crumpled. Uh, that, that's lost energy. So kinetic energy isn't conserved in those kinds of collisions. But momentum is. Momentum is always conserved. Uh, take a gun. This is an anti-collision in, in a way, but momentum's always conserved. You take a gun and you fire it. Now, before you fire the gun, the momentum of the bullet and the gun is zero, right? I mean, it's just standing there. After you fire it, if you add up the momentum of the bullet and the gun, it's still zero. Here's the deal. You got... Uh, let's see. You got the gun. You got the gun, you got the bullet, inside, P equals zero. And the mass of the bullet uh, times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the gun times the velocity of the bullet, it's zero, because, well, all the velocities are zero. Now, after you fire it, the bullet leaves the gun, and the bullet's got a, a velocity, a momentum, P equals mv, okay? That's a little m, little v. All right, now, the gun is going to recoil, right? It's going to shoot back. And this is going to have a momentum. Let's say it's going in the opposite direction. So we'll call it negative velocity. It's moving in this direction. And it's going to be minus big M, big V. Now, when you add these all up together, you're still going to get zero. You can feel that. When you shoot a gun, you get this big kickback, right? And what happens is you're conserving momentum. The thing is, the, the gun's got a lot more mass, and so it's going to have a smaller velocity. Maybe I should say, well, let's, let's try it this way. The total momentum is the momentum of the gun plus the momentum of the bullet, which is going to be, let's see, the gun is minus m v. It's going to have a much smaller velocity, but a much bigger mass. and. Uh, the bullet's got a much smaller mass and a much bigger velocity. But when you add them up, you get zero. If you had a gun that weighed the same amount as the bullet, when you fired it, it'd go right through your arm. And that's why guns have to be a little heavier, so that they, so that the recoil doesn't tear you up, so they can absorb it in the mass. But before and after, momentum's the same. Okay. Um, the space shuttle, the rocket takes off. Heads off this way. But what you got going on is you got this huge, I mean, this large mass moving at a small velocity. And it's going up. Right, and you can see that, you can see the shuttle take off. Any rocket, it starts going pretty darn slow. But the reason it's getting up there is because it's conserving momentum. Same thing, same thing's happening here. We've got the gas, the, uh, you've got the exhaust coming out, and the exhaust is made up of very tiny particles, really small mass. But the velocity is huge, and it's going the other way, and it cancels out 
it cancels out the momentum of the rocket. So the rocket, the reason it takes off, it's not because it's pushing against the launch pad, it's because it's conserving momentum. I'm going this way because I'm throwing out particles this way. I got this big mass going slow, small mass going fast, but the sum of the momenta is still zero. Momentum still conserved. In a, any kind of collision, momentum is going to be conserved. So if I have a couple of cars going at each other, momentum will be conserved. Now, elastic collisions are hard to do. They're hard to calculate uh, because there's so many variables involved. You know, the car has got one car, say for example, has got an initial mass. Uh, the other car's got a mass. Uh, they both have initial velocities. After the collision, they got the same mass, but they got new velocities. It's a mess. But if you've got an inelastic collision, a purely inelastic collision where the cars actually stick together, it makes it a lot easier to figure out. So for so for an inelastic collision. Inelastic collision. Now, kinetic energy is not conserved, but momentum is. So, let's say I've got two cars. Oh, I like these colors. They smack into each other, and one grabs onto the other tail, and they're stuck. I'll call this one, call this two. And let's say um, M1 is a thousand kilograms. And M2 is a uh, Fifteen hundred kilograms. All right. Now let's say the initial velocity of V1, so one thousand fifteen hundred. Okay. Hey, Robert, do you mind if I ride on the side of your truck? Hey, you know it's, it's all physics. What you doing in the street? Oh, we're recording the lecture. Okay. And you got a noisy car. Yeah. <laughs> Well, have fun. All right, I'll see you later. You see, that's why you should hang out in the streets, because you meet a lot of people.